I have come up with one of the best homepage layouts that optimizes both user experience and conversion. Now, effective homepage layouts can differ from the type of website, like how Amazon's homepage is just products and Facebook's is a newsfeed. This is the best layout for brick and mortar businesses like bakeries, lawyers, contractors, and any other service-based businesses. In this video, we're first gonna talk about three things that make for bad homepage layouts, three things that make for good homepage layouts, and lastly, putting all that information together, making the best homepage layout. First, what makes for shitty homepage layouts? One homepage layout I unfortunately see more and more is what I call the PowerPoint layout. This is where people think it's fun and creative to make a scrollless homepage with a full screen slider, and that's just it. This is just bad for so many different reasons. First, homepages need content, and you can only fit so much content in a couple of slides. Secondly, sliders have horrible click-through rates and the data just isn't in their favor. They just aren't effective. A website is a website, so stop trying to make it a PowerPoint presentation. The next commonly made homepage layout mistake is when people rely on using sliders to lay out their content. I just mentioned this, but sliders have horrible click-through rates. If your content is important enough to go on the homepage, then why is it hidden behind a slider where the majority of people aren't even going to see it? Your website isn't Tinder, so stop trying to make people swipe for content. The last homepage layout mistake I see is when people barely have a homepage. You'd be surprised to see how many websites' homepages just lack content entirely. You'll go to the homepage of a website and it'll say something like, We believe in creating the best experience for you, with a stock image of a sunset. Meanwhile, the website's about carpentry and home renovation. Your homepage isn't a movie teaser, so stop trying to make it one. Next, what makes for good homepage layouts? First, your websites above the fold should be able to answer these three questions. Who are you? What do you do? And how can you help me? If, without scrolling, your website can answer those three questions, you're well on your way to creating a very intuitive and positive user experience. When those questions are answered, a new visitor will have the confidence they need to start scrolling and browsing through your other website's pages. The second thing that makes for good homepage layouts is having a customer journey. A homepage should funnel users into contacting you or converting in some way. To do this, your content should be ordered in such a way that first introduces who you are and what you do, then transitions to how great you are and why they should consider you. Then finally, leading them into a call to action to make the conversion or purchase. The third thing that makes for good homepage layouts is consistency. So many people try to stand out with their websites that they end up alienating every one of its users. Nowadays, when you go to a website, there are just things that you expect. Like you expect to have a logo in the top left. You expect the navigation to be at the top. You expect to have to scroll for information. You expect there to be a footer at the bottom. If your website doesn't follow these expectations, you're doing it wrong. You're creating an experience that users aren't familiar with and making it harder and harder for them to use your website. So if you put all that together, what do you get? Well, here it is. Let's go over the layout from top to bottom and explain why it's the best. Starting with the top, this above the fold layout makes it very easy for you to answer the three questions. Who are you? What do you do? And how can you help me? Make sure the navigation is always visible and that there's a logo in the top left. You should also have a CTA button in the top right for the chance of an easy conversion. Scrolling down, you have the three most important products or services. The reason why your products or services come first after the hero is because if you don't have what they're looking for, then you're not helping them. This is just better for user experience. When users scroll down and see you have what they need, they're more inclined to continue through your website. After you show them what you offer, it's time to show the users who you are. This is the opportunity to bring some life into your website, making you stand out from your competition, which is why it's so high up in the layout. After you show them what you do and who you are, now is the time to persuade the user to go with your business. There are many ways to go about this, but some of the most common ways are testimonials, reviews, case studies, portfolios, or a list of brands that you've worked with. 
personally, when I make a homepage, I like to do at least two of these, but a good range is one to four. Lastly, at the bottom is your call to action. I see a lot of call to actions on websites have text saying something like, get a quote now with a button leading to the contact page. I think this is stupid because you might as well put the form right there at the bottom of the page for more convenience, which is why you should always put the form directly on the page. So that's the layout. I like it because it avoids common web design mistakes like sliders and scrollless layouts. It's designed to provide a great user experience. It has customer journey that guides users into conversions. And it follows a sales funnel where you start with awareness, which leads to consideration and finally ending with the purchase. When designing your own homepage, try to think about the way you order and lay out your content. This layout can be used as a guide or starting point to make your own effective homepage layout.